Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out the top new games made with Unity launch in August 24. This might be the toughest month that I've had in selecting games for this list. So much awesome stuff came out last month, really impressive. There were at least 30 games that I thought looked really awesome, really unique. It was really tough to get it down to just 10. I didn't even end up including two mega hits that just left early access, Pegline and Core Keeper, both really great games. The reason why I make these videos is to show you everything the engine can do. The only limit is really just your own skills and imagination, and the variety and the awesomeness of the games shown here really puts onto the test. All of these games are uniquely impressive, so the list in no particular order, except for the number one game that is my personal pick of the month. Do you want to learn all about Blender? Right now there's a excellent humble bundle with a whole bunch of courses. It teaches you to do everything from the basis of Blender, learn all about animation and rigging, then learn about how to make visual effects in Blender, how to handle simulation nodes, geometry nodes, and a bunch more. I've previously gone through one of these courses myself and I really enjoyed it. So if you want to make your own assets, check it out with the link in the description. Alright, so starting off at number 10, with an awesome game that finally launched on Steam, it's Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. Many people have said this is one of the best Metroidvanias ever. The game is super stylish, there's lots of skills and abilities to unlock, you can control time with your time powers, you can obviously use your double jump, you can dash and grappling hook, use all kinds of abilities to traverse this world, and then use your combat skills to fight some huge deadly bosses. Explore this huge world with lots of unique biomes and a mysterious story to uncover. People say the controls are really excellent, the game feels really satisfying to play. However, despite the game being really awesome, reviews at Steam are only 80% positive, mainly that's because the game requires you to use Ubisoft Connect. But if you can get through that and you feel like Metroidvanias, then this looks like an excellent one, so if you're a fan of the genre, definitely give this a shot. Next, here's a sequel to one of my personal favorite games, it's Shape Has 2. This is a factory automation game with a simple concept and very complex execution. The goal is just to build some shapes, shapes like square or circle, but then you can slice each of those shapes in four parts, and then you can merge parts, paint them, put them on top of each other, rotate them, and so on. So it starts off really simple and then becomes really complex. It really is a fascinating game. I've spent a lot of time on the original. It's a really compelling factory game. The one big change in this sequel is how the previous game was in 2D and this one is now in 3D. Adding one extra dimension really adds a lot to the game. The machines can be more complex with several layers both above and below, and the outputs are also quite a bit more complex. You can unlock tons of upgrades and new machines, you can take advantage of the third dimension to build really all over the place. It's honestly impressive how this game is built in Unity. It really showcases the massive scale you can build with the engine. Makes me wonder if they're using dots in any way. This one looks like a really excellent sequel to an already excellent game. It's already got over 5,000 overwhelmingly positive reviews in just two weeks, so this is already a huge hit. Up next, here we have Crime Scene Cleaner. It's yet another simulator game with a very descriptive name. I remember playing one of the first of these silly simulator games. It was Visera Cleanup Detail. That was many years ago. It was very unique at the time and quite a lot of fun. Nowadays, these games are a lot more common, so it takes something special to really stand out, and this one does appear to do that. Like it implies, you are a crime scene cleaner. Except, you're not the cleaner working for the police afterwards. Instead, you're the cleaner working for the mob. So you get a call and you go onto the location, then look for everything that is out of place and put it back exactly where it should be, grab a sponge and clean the walls, grab your mop and clean the floors, upgrade to some power tools and power wash everything. Make sure you get all the blood, pick up all the debris, all the evidence and weapons left behind, and make sure you leave the place spotless. Do your job and get the cash. I have to say that every time I see one of these games, it makes me want to make a complete course on making a game just like this, making a simulation game with a bunch of interactions. It's a genre that is honestly not necessarily too difficult to make, and if you pick a good theme, it can find quite a lot of success. This one is definitely a huge success. It already has over 6,000 reviews, which is quite insane, and they're sitting at 97% overwhelmingly positive. So this has likely already made about $5 million in gross revenue, definitely a huge hit. Next here's one that's been widely anticipated for a long time, it's called Farewell North. If you regularly watch Game Dev YouTube, then you're probably already familiar with this one. It is made by Cal Banks, who has been documenting the development journey of this game for the past four years. You can go to his channel and see the entire journey, how it started as a tiny prototype, and over time he continued building upon it until the final polished game. It's a story-focused game, you play as a border collie on an adventure with your human, explore the land and sea while bringing color back into this world. Visually, the game looks really unique, the color appearing is a really nice effect and completely changes how the whole world looks. Journey through this world at your own pace, solve some puzzles and uncover hidden objects and secrets. If you're a fan of story-heavy emotional games, and this looks like a great pick, people are loving the game, 98% positive reviews, which is a near-perfect score with almost 200 reviews. Then for something quite fun, here is Cat Quest 3. I've heard great things about this series, although I've never played any of them. I always love this look, 2D sprites on a 3D world. This one is an open world action adventure game in a world full of pirates. 
And of course the pirates are rats. While the hero itself is actually a cat, there's lots of nice battles in both the overworld and in the 2D dungeons. You can walk on land or roam around your ship, use your ship to travel around and also use it to fight some enemies. Being a pirate world means there's lots of treasure hanging around everywhere. Explore and uncover the secrets either solo or in co-op. It's got 1200 very positive reviews, so if you're into a fun RPG experience then check it out. Next here we have the latest Five Nights at Freddy's game, it's Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit. Interestingly, this is a 2D pixel art side-scrolling adventure game, so very different from the usual first-person spooky jump scares. In this one, you jump into the pit and explore this very unusual place. The goal is to survive five nights, but there is a threat constantly pursuing you. Travel between time periods, gather some clues, solve some puzzles and try to save your friends, your family and even your own life. Despite being side-scrolling pixel art, it definitely evokes a feeling of dread. It's got excellent use of sound design and music. People are also real loving this one. It's got over 6,000 reviews at 96% overwhelmingly positive. If you're a fan of Five Nights at Freddy's or really horror in general, then this looks like a great one. Next here's an interesting one that also has a YouTube presence, it's Feed the D. This one is made by Luke Muscat, who also made the super popular Jetpack Joyride and Fruit Ninja. This is a Lovecraftian roguelike. In order to protect your cities, you have to feed the monster at the bottom of the sea through the cave system. The caves are all super dark, I love the lighting effects on this one. But as you dive deeper, make sure you remember where you came from. If you get lost and run out of air, then it's game over. Thankfully, the cave has tons of resources lying around. Bring them back to your base to upgrade yourself so you can go further and deeper. I really love the concept and the game seems super well built and very polished. He's clearly a very experienced game designer. On YouTube, you can see the journey of development. The first video was in March of last year, so about a year and a half of development. Not an insane long time and the game is doing quite well. It's got 300 reviews at 93% very positive. So if you'd like to play a Lovecraft roguelike then definitely give this a try. Then here's a game that looks really unique, it's called Loop Structure. It's a tower defense game but the towers are not fixed, they are on vehicles going through a loop. That's a really clever idea, I've never seen this before. It definitely takes the tower defense genre in a nice interesting new direction. You can create your loop, you can build up your battle train with various unique models. But keep in mind how fast your train goes around the track. If the loop is too big, then you likely won't defend it in time. It also has an upgrade system, kind of like Vampire Survivors. You can lock upgrades throughout your playthrough to make your battle train even stronger. This is a great example of taking an existing genre and twisting it in an interesting way. The game is out now and has 150 very positive reviews. Then for something quite a bit more chill, here is Song of the Prairie. Start your journey in this relaxing farm, plant some crops, take care of your animals and harvest some comically large fruits. Go into town to meet some new people, solve some puzzles and rest in some hot springs, encounter some very unique animals and breed them. Do all kinds of activities and customize your character. All very chill, no comment at all. So if you want a relaxing experience then this would be a great one. The game has just left after a successful early access launch for about a year and a half and it's got 900 very positive reviews. And at number one for my personal pick of the month, here is a game that I've been waiting forever since it was announced, it's Tactical Breach Wizards. Two of my favorite games of all time are SWAT and XCOM, and this is basically a mix of that. It's all about tactics in all kinds of scenarios, kind of like SWAT, and it's turn-based with unique characters and abilities, kind of like XCOM. Although the game is intentionally not as punishing as XCOM, you've got free rewinds, so you can experiment with all your characters and abilities and try out some crazy plan. And if it doesn't go well, you can just rewind time and try another approach. So this really encourages lots of interesting playstyles. You try something fun, maybe it works, maybe not, and if it doesn't, you can just try again. Every level is handcrafted, no randomness. You have a cast of characters, each with unique personalities and abilities. It's also just fun to engage in these SWAT-like levels, reaching into a building and so on, but do it with some fun magical abilities instead of some real weapons. All in all, the game looks like a lot of fun and very well built. People are already loving it. Almost 3,000 reviews at 97% positive. So once again, this is a huge hit. I can't wait to play this myself. All right, so that's 10 awesome new games made with DNT launched in August 24. I hope this list helped you see how DNT Engine is capable of building anything. The only limits are really just your own skills and imagination. Check out my own game, Dinky Gardens, and I hope you enjoy playing it.